things. <laughs> uh, make an advertisement. Cool. Um, so welcome back. Um, today we're gonna add an undo button to roster. Uh, this should be actually pretty easy because we can just do the opposite action of whatever we did. Um, so for example, if we plan in, we just delete. Uh, we have the data available there. So we'll just uh, capture that as a monad and put it in a list. And then uh, whenever the user presses the undo button, we just pop the monad from the list and apply it to the environment that's all i think so yeah it should be pretty easy, easy i think uh yeah well, we'll just do it only for um rostering uh well let's get into it uh let's see we have it open here right uh, no, it's not running. So yeah, I set up most things, but I forgot some. I have even a checklist, but yeah, I went off it. Hmm. Well, let's just get into it. Um, so yeah, the first thing we need to do is make the button, uh, and then we'll make it do undo things. Oh, I forgot chat too. Bad, bad. There's this like this list of things I need to do before starting with streaming. It just keeps on increasing, man. Oh no. Oh yeah, actually that's what I want. Maybe. You know, I can close the terminal. Oh, and I fixed the layout of this. Now it should be always correct. I should use this Java stuff for the layout. Uh, so this is the on-stream chat. I also have one on off-stream. I want to have it in the videos. It's a bit weird if you start talking randomly to people and they're not visible. At least if you watch it on YouTube or something. So yeah, we can close this now. Because this don't. So we have compiler there, uh, chat here and code there. Um, so the difficult part of the undo is that it can happen in multiple places so we need to manage the state of the list of things to undo. Uh, as you just be the accumulator but where to put it that's my uh, concern because at the moment it's um, we can delete roster entries from uh, the pop-up and we can plan in from the spe uh, from the form. There are actually two forms, and we need to capture all those events and put them together into like a uh, list with opposite actions. Uh, and then there's also the thing about editing. Should I capture edits too? Because they're pretty seamless, actually. I don't think I'm gonna do those. I'm just gonna do um, plan ins and deletes. She may delete something by mistake and it will be annoying, but edits are usually kind of small, so I would just not concern them. Are you running? Yes. Excellent. Oh yeah, that, we also made this thing on stream, by the way. <laughs> it was fun. Ah, oh, I don't think I did everything. Yeah, some, some things off, off screen as well. 
Hmm. Let's see. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is um, find a place for the button. Are you loaded? You're not loaded. The JavaScript hasn't compiled yet. Or something. <laughs> this is my weird dev setup being fucked. But that's fine. I will just modify something and pull out. Yesterday I had the same problem. No idea what it did to that. No, it wasn't yesterday, it was like two days ago. And I said it would stream yesterday, but uh it's just not in the mood. <laughs> like I did it before, streaming when not in the mood and then Soling raided me and I was kind of thrown off by it. Yeah. Mood is important. So we're waiting for the thing to compile now. This one. That's it. And now this has finished, now the other one needs to compile. And this will um, make the files for JavaScript. This will take a while. That's fine. We can find where to add the button uh, in the meanwhile. I maybe also want to increase the font size. Uh, can I do that? Let's do that. Uh, hmm. We'll make like a separate uh, streamer setup or something. Maybe there's a zoom package for Emacs. That would be the best. So not always use this computer to. Like I sometimes use this computer to program by myself, and then oh, there's actually <laughs> it's just there. Okay, Ctrl X plus. Okay, there we have. There we go. Oh, that's actually nice. Well, uh, we can also zoom this one for a bit. Ah, look at that. Same mechanism. They say it's Control Plus Plus. It's being captured. I think it's shift or something. I don't know what's going on. I'll check on remain tomorrow. Okay, now we can read stuff. Where did you go? But oh, this is still small. The other than three. This. Oh, that's fine. I only use it to jump anyway. So something is wrong with that. It's probably like Nix integration. It's complaining about a mm, light check, huh? So what we're doing now is finding the. Um, this for the two why did you oh right because it's not being loaded properly right now right so one of these is actually position position absolute or <laughs> fixed even yeah so it's like on the bottom or on the side or something Not edit entry, right? It's um, planning or something. Like I found it easier to keep um, planning in and editing in separate widgets because they're really different from each other. But usually you would have the update form and um, creation form be the same, right? But it doesn't really make sense in this case. Because you got the repetition macro as well and other things. But we'll add a, a new button to plan it. Here. I 
I'm thinking of making this um, using the event riser. No, that doesn't make sense. Wait, so we have... Yeah, actually, maybe it makes sense. So we have the event that... Uh, this event thing, right? For doing undoes. Undo. And then we also have the event of shit happening. Like uh, a plan. And we need to capture both. Do different stuff. It's almost like a free monad. Almost. But we're using reflex, so we can just use that as abstraction instead. Yeah, so what I'm thinking is just making a data type that can capture uh, on one hand the monad for doing the reverse action. Well, once we have, uh, if we plan in, we do the opposite of that and do the undo list. We just capture that in the data type. And the other one is then for this, which will just be an empty thing. Get like a data and do action. So one is the M. Uh, do action M. And the other one is then do. Call us two. Mm. Two undo. This is beautiful. So I can just do uh, undo here. Oh, I just realized. No. Yeah, this could actually work. I have a form thing to capture. Um, I need to zoom this too. What did we zoom? Oh, maybe it went away as soon as we changed buffer. That's annoying. Really? Oh, it's per it's per buffer. That's annoying. This increases font size, then I suppose. Hmm. hmm. I'll figure it out another time. Yeah, so we have met or we um, override the unit value of button event. It should be f map into that because it's in a monad. So button is like in a HTML monad, right? And it returns the event with unit, and we override that value with undo. Then we can do like tell event. I really need to make this existential though. So I'm afraid that it won't like it. We'll see that. We'll see. We'll just do it easy like this. Should be easy. Should be. Right, so the thing I was thinking was the form stuff, right? I have a form mechanism to handle enterprises. Which I probably should upstream as well. Should upstream lots of stuff. But it's all language. Ugh. Fucking language. Why is it language? Fuck.
I'm talking about these uh, language constraints. Uh, this is uh, not like easily. I need to change this to upstream, but uh, I can't right now. I can, but I want to. Well, I want to, but I feel pre I feel obliged not to. <laughs> I can upstream these though. Ah, this is the... This is the core form thing. And what it does, uh, as soon as you press enter... What does it do? Form captures enter presses of child components and sends an oh right. So we ask of the child component. Oh right. It it requires a event. And uh, we make sure the form doesn't submit it itself. Go for the default. So now the the underlying Mona thing will handle the event instead of uh, custom JavaScript shit. <laughs> That's great. I was, I was thinking maybe I can um, add the undo, undo action in here. But no, this is too low level. There is a, a higher level thing though. That makes it like a default HTML form, action form. This thing. And this thing hooks into Servant Reflex really nicely. That's why I want to upstream it. So what you can put in here is like uh, basically any 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 function that is generated from Servant. So you get all these functions, right? This just just type signatures basically. Well, they're here. There are a lot of them. There are a lot of them. But they don't do anything, that's the important part. Just types. And then uh, a little bit of... Um, a little bit of what? No, no SSR, exit R. No SSR. Oh, I know. No server-side rendering uh, XSR requests. So in case of server-side rendering, you don't do anything. That's what that does. But they just uh, pipe through the generated stuff. Just, yeah. Uh, not here. Yeah, clients. So this is just generating the implementations from types. Which is cool. So you can gem these functions into this form and you get like a HTML kind of form with the uh, spin state. Yeah. But how does it tie into undo? Well, you can maybe, uh, well maybe not this one. Maybe we can make like an undo form. That, uh, uh, Cause this thing actually um, tells the, we want to know what is in here. Uh, like the, the value to put in there. So maybe we can put like an extra constraint on this thing to give it the set thing. Oh, that makes no sense. Maybe we should put an opposite action in here. Like give it another function. Yeah, that's it. We can put that opposite function so the monad thing. Is that two? 
you and do action. Opposite. No, no, no. no. Yeah, yeah. This is recording the opposite. Record. Opposite. This is undo. Do and do. Do and do. That's the word. <laughs> yes. Do and do. Now you know I'm a programmer because I said do twice. In inform. Oh, we don't know about uh, undo in language. It's fine. It doesn't really make sense to zoom this thing in the. Hmm. This is a massive sum type of strings. It says strings. I don't know how useful this is. <laughs> so that's even more beautiful. It's make undone. Make do undone. Yes. <laughs> Make do undone. That's weird. Do undone. Do undone. Just undo. Let's not do this stuff first. This is too abstract for now. We can just make a crappy implementation and if we need to make it more abstract later, we can do that. But uh, I don't think it's necessary right now. It'll be too much work. Goodbye. Let's keep it simple. Undo. Right, the uh, compiler source is a bit behind, I think. Sometimes this happens. Record opposite and do event. Right, so what do, what do you even do with this? Well, how about we tell about it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I want to have uh, like a undo widget or something that just captures all this crap. Kind of like those widget. And you can just tell it. Type. You have like event back, right? Or something. Event back. What are you even? What are you? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna add the undo actions to this thing. Um, so where do I? Um, maybe you can more locally instead of event. No, I think I want to do an event writer because this may be useful to extend later. Because the way I I do if this works, well, if this works. It's general enough to basically be useful for any uh, server request as long as they can uh, identify the opposite action in, in place. And I think most of the time you can do that. It's also simple, so. Simple and powerful. I like that. It's like a function. Yeah, let's make like an opposite widget or something. Toast.
I was thinking like, can I do this more crappily uh, initially or something? But no, I don't. There's not much to it. Then just make this work. So we'll do that. Your data now. This is gonna blow up everything, by the way. <laughs> you're no longer a lens, you're a traversal. This is gonna be a sun type. You can keep that. You can keep the record. We can keep the record, but we cannot keep the lens property. It's too strong. I need to make it weaker. So the other is in the fan. No, then I need to attack the M in here too. Like this M. Mm. Kind of annoying. It's gonna change like everything. What will it? Maybe I can do that actually. So I just put the writer event writer or something. What, what was it? Well, you totally can do that. <laughs> I don't think it's a big issue actually. Okay. I'm kind of fine with this. The reason I like prefer to do it like this is that then I don't have to deal with existentials, which is always weird. Because we have tigers. I remember last time I was doing that. Uh... No, I don't want to. It's too loud. I'm trying to make music less loud. All constructors of the type event back contain the field name Toast event. Right, we just got. Uh, right, you can't, uh, can no longer be uh, built. You need to be uh, C opt, I think. You probably can get away with C opt. Oh, yeah, we can match you on the, on the record then. We don't need to have this thing anymore. So you can match on Toast Event. C uh, opt or something? I have no idea. C opt. I need to clear cash. I have a shortcut. Uh, oh, this is, uh, right, I wasn't even doing the projectile thing. I should go. C opt. C opt. Let's 
just Google it. Scenery uh, plants. Product sum. Right. This. Co product. It's not a sum, it's a co product. C tor C T R C tor It's in fact like this, right? Yeah. Miss on that. But it's not it's a prism. Prism Prime. Yeah. Probably should just be consistent with the uh, way I name things. I've been doing like this for now, um, up till now. It would be better backwards compatible to name or keep the toast event around, but I'm gonna have issues with that anyway, I think. Yeah. This is gonna block the entire part. That's fine. Oh, you don't know about the new actions. Right, we need to. You need to define and uh, undo. I think we just make a module undo. That's fine. Yeah. I don't think common though in front end. Um. Yeah, I think that makes sense. We made like a module toast, and now we make a module undo. more verbose than <laughs> remember when I was giving weird names to this some type thing well it's an even better name but yeah it's gonna be similar to this instead of those which will be under widget and it won't know about language though let's make it undefined for now Hey widget. What are you gonna get? What are you gonna get? New actions and Yeah, like uh <laughs> copy paste different development. This is how I make all my modules, I just copy over a previous module and start editing it. <laughs> it's a copy paste modus, right? I still don't know about interactions, that's indeed the thing I've been trying to solve. Well, the other thing you could do is make like a template or something, right? But I don't know how to do that, so I just keep, keep on copying and pasting things. Is it hard? Let's look it up. Maybe Emacs can do that. Template. File. When opening a new file of certain types, I'd like to supply the plate be inserted. Oh, 
auto insert. That's a lot of comments. <laughs> I know you're dealing with Emacs when you get these dates. Yeah, the thing is lots of copy paste indicates uh, syntactic noise, but it's necessary to an extent. Imports, how does it only I read a module that was doing, um, or like I, I read a, well, I was looking at the paper that did um, modules at dependent type level. So they express modules as a dependent type system. That sounded interesting. Then you have a little less boilerplate. Well, you get like programmatic control over your module stuff. That's, <laughs> so you can make like your program figure out your models, module system. But yeah, you need it. You need some symbols. What is it? Oh, we have a loop. Undo predo and all right. So undo can't dep depend on anything because it's right. So this actually needs to be typed. In. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Copy paste you again. <laughs> and then types. Oh, the reason I'm doing that is because this is because uh, the env module is basically required for any widget because this a widget thing is in env. Oh, actually, it's this thing. This is env. And, uh... We have the env back inside a widget. Because of the writer somewhere? Where is it? Env widget. Right, so the env widget is in here. Maybe. Oh, what, what's the A widget? That's weird. Oh, A widget is without environment. It's just... Right, it's just the crap you need to do any reflex stuff. Without... Um, Server-side rendering breaking stuff. Right, I see. Anyway, we have has env. And event writer. Which has the event back. Now we need to make a type for this. Do we? Hmm. Let's see. Uh, we were at Indo. This thing is probably a widget, but a widget is inside env. Ergo, we can't define this type here. We need to export to a different module. Just to break the cycle. That's all. We'll delete this thing. We don't need Pergolute anymore. And we broke the cycle. There we go. Look what you sent, man. Come on, compiler. Do some work. I think it doesn't like this. It's not watching this. Something broke. Hmm. 
do something? Oh, it is broken. That's annoying. It should that. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Why does it shut down? So my build computer just set up shut down for no reason. Yeah, mute module cycle cycle or uh, pain in the ass. I think you don't have to be Python. Python just goes along with it. Says, <laughs> okay, yeah, you're fine, man. <laughs> It actually causes other problems because now you need to. Be careful in other ways. <laughs> what in Python you mean? Type coupling towards types. Oh, you mean in Haskell? Yeah. Well, you get like a tree, right? You get a. It's it's. I think they left it uh, simple and on purpose. The language is often about cycle dependency. But yeah, figuring them out is kind of annoying. Actually, don't really always know why it's the case and then you need to pedantically look at the things and the arrows are not that good either it just shows you what the imports are and then say deal with it ah i have a screen okay good Wait, I think I got the could get another screen maybe. Yeah. That'd be good. That languages have that to a lesser degree. Do you have mod uh, module problems in closure as well? Okay, we're back. Back. Need to restart all these scripts. Uh, sending is correct. Running probably not. Broken pipe, yeah. not a complex environment at all. It's just normal. Don't worry about it. Oh no, this is gonna build too. Don't do that. Actually do. Don't do. I'm not even gonna build because we're in the middle of a refactor. Because that's annoying. Don't work but close your by default. Since typing system is our art and you have less cases where you're actually getting them. Hmm. 
Right, because she's just depending on dicks all the time or something. Oh yeah, we have to cycle again. Good job, man. So let's see, and you, you cannot depend on, what the fuck, why is this Indu thing only exporting Indu actions even though it's not defined at all? I think you're fine Indu, you're fine, but Indu types however is not. Yeah, look at that. It's just data. But this is a beautiful file. <laughs> oh this is like this is like Java. We define our one data thing. And that's the entire file. I always like these comments. <laughs> and it appears to be a common pattern. Uh, wait, but I actually find myself creating less. Files, this modules enclosure. It's become a better community to write large modules. Anemic? I like, I really like you, anemic model design there. Anemic? Honey? I don't know words. Anemic is condition where you lack enough. Option to your body. Oh, anemia, anemic. Mm -hmm. you, you think there's not enough blood in my module? Why, why do you think there's not enough blood in my module? <laughs> huh? like. The reference to Java design. Oh, you're right. This is not actually an anti pattern in Haskell. No, in Java you have to do this. You can't define classes in there. They have to all have their own little file, right? <laughs> or you have to use uh, anonymous classes everywhere. It's probably also a good way to do Java. Just never define any class and only use interfaces and one static class and then define all your static functions in that one class. <laughs> just don't touch that object stuff. You have to for libraries and stuff. Like, you have to create a new J frame for Swing and then put a panel on top of it. Wikipedia.org. I think you can just uh, post links here. I don't have any blocks on it. I like links. <laughs> I'm not big like Sony, so I don't have to care about evil links. This is a software domain model where domain objects contain little or no business logic. Oh, this is, this is Haskell, right? So the main model is uh, your data. Corporate both behavior and data. Ah, it's... Uh, it is a free Mona. That's what I'm talking about. This is also sort of... It's a crappy free Mona. I didn't do the library or anything. I'm just gonna make something myself. See if it works. Probably will work. Because I'm also like using reflex, so I can just totally depend on that. A reflex is uh, capable of sending actions like this. And we'll just uh, get it out. It's fine.
We have another loop. And it died. <laughs> Why did you die? <laughs> it really didn't like that loop, it just stopped. <laughs> it says like, no, I had enough. Module frontend blah 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 undo imports prelude. Which imports frontend env. Right, so this is a problem. You're importing undo. You shouldn't. You should import undo types. Okay. Anyway, with regard to closure and cyclic dependencies, the beauty of things like closure is that you can redefine how the module system works from your code if you really need really <laughs> that's scary but it's like the same thing i said i uh, talked about with the dependent type stuff are you saying that like if we have haskell with dependent types we basically have closure namespaces are just macros oh so they do name ending for you. Right, the M is wrong. Is it? Why? Why are you wrong? M is kind star. We need to define the kind in type level. Fine. Yeah, this is legal. We need kind signatures. Then maybe sure. Expecting one more argument to M. Expecting a type that M has kind. Yeah, it's supposed to have kind star. Or maybe. No, maybe the thing is we need to say we don't care about result. That's fine. No, now we're going to push the constraint onto everything else as well. It's going to say A. Oh, this is... I need to have two free vibe. I knew it's gonna be a problem. <laughs> it's biting me already. No, I need to add another. Yeah. Boys build doesn't need M. Why? Why do I need it? I don't want it.
It doesn't have an A here, right? So if you're gonna add the A to... Uh... No, it's not A widget, right? I'm lying. To the event writer. Then we also need to add the A here. And that means we need to edit everything. Again. I don't want to do that. I want to keep it like an... Uh, kind of like event writer does. So let's just look up the type signature of event writer and see if we can copy their magic. I think it's just this kind. Kindness. Um. Yeah, they just say it's unit. Okay, let's just make it unit, whatever. No, it doesn't It doesn't guarantee that. No, we're not concerning anything. I'm lying. Ah, uh, you can just do this. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Be happy. We're not going to use the action anyway. Like, we're just, we're just doing this for the side effect, right? So we're going to push this mona thing into the other above lying mona. We're not using it immediately, but as soon as we pop it from the list, it's get, uh, and we push it into the monad, it gets evaluated, if that makes sense. Okay, what? I'm sorry, Jimmy, I haven't been really keeping up. And this flexibility, you would have to look at template Haskell, but in template Haskell I would need to be able to change the semantics of THC from code. Can't do that. What can, because it says I.O. so you can do anything you want. Anything! Anything in template that's cool. You can even like, uh, some guy hooked it up to a prolog uh, engine to do extra prolog logic as validation. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't do that, I would use type system, but he wanted to use prolog, so there you have it. Be able to pass state around, you can do that in template that's cool. Because you have I.O. so you can do anything. Then it could be, then it could come close. If you would create a type variable of higher kind. And then unwrap the higher kind type of tuple. Yeah, but can you read the current GHC state from template Haskell? I have no idea. Like you mean whatever you're passing right now? You could <laughs> write a compiler plugin for that, right? But I mean you have IO so you can do anything. Uh, Basically, yeah. But probably not from the current. Uh, well, it'll be hard to do that. Or maybe there's an, a lot, like a easy way to do it. I don't know how. It's like template Haskell is huge. I haven't. I haven't really like bothered exploring that at all. I don't really get much into macros at all. That's like a good reason for me to do uh, closure because it's so good for macros or like any list basically. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Compiler information? I doubt it. But then again, I... I didn't thought that the product stuff was yeah, possible either, but... FIO, but you don't have the references. But I mean, like... You have I.O. so you have access to the world so you can do anything you want, right? Well... Kind of. I'm, I'm thinking like, you need to open up the memory of the GHC then, and then inspect that. That will be hard from I.O. <laughs> you get them. Um, you can't inject GHC process or something using it without the uh, audio that worked. Actually, your record's a bit more powerful, I think. There are no two uh, reader macros in closure. Okay, if you say so. I don't know what a reader macro is. Let's look it up. Reader. So they have like a, a little, little community around making macros. That's insane. Even like in Rust, I didn't use macros, even though it's, it's, it's supposed to be a really good language for that. But I just never found any need to do it. But that's like uh, the problem with uh, these kind of things, right? You only... Um, 
You only want to have it once you have started using it. It's like having a type system. <laughs> like if you no, if you never used a type system before, why would you ever ever? So see, it sounds ridiculous. Adding more constraints to your code. Why would you do that? It's ridiculous. Greater flexibility allowing you to create entirely new syntax on top of Lisp. That's <laughs> cool. Can you get rid of the parentheses? Can you flip the parentheses? That'd be great. Oh, it's to read expressions. I see. And then like interpret them. I would flip this parentheses around to annoy everyone. There are def macros, new macros, new macros defined, syntax of the language. Def macros triggered when you start things. Is it good for the parentheses? Can you make Python? <laughs> First thing then. Oh, you could, you could like, um, you can do embed, embed it in, inside like your closure little thing. And then you can embed it Python, and in there you can embed it like Scala, and in there you can embed it like, you know, Rust. You can go all the way down. Get like a, a pyramid of languages. It'll be beautiful. Okay. Yeah, they have optional types, right? I, I, kn I knew about uh, Racket. A friend of mine made like a number crunching thing in that. Uh. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, they do number crunching. <laughs> Why is it all pictures? Who's developing this then? The people. Oh, yeah, who's developing Haskell? It's a good question. Are we just gonna split up into more and more niche? Well, like this is just Lisp, so it's the same as 1970 thing. Yeah, type. Any type bracket. You need to introduce it. Rear? Honey. Proposition. Oh. Huh? <laughs> These errors for something completely different. Oh, it's type. Oh. So we go from distance to point, point, real. Is this type variable? We have a function, distance. Gets two points and it produces a real. Ah, I see. And a point is a struct. Ah, okay. So this. Let's zoom in here too. This is in fact uh, distance. Point, point, real, and real is a data. Oh, a point I mean is a data, which has an x, which is real. Like you can say it like this, but uh, you could also give it names with brackets. Using brackets, what the hell? Yeah. Doesn't fit, man. There you go. This error is weird. It's a function. It is function, though. I, I would. I immediately thought function, and it was. So that's good. 
the definition of it is weird. Left top, bottom. Your program crashes. How to get top type? Ah, I think it's unit. Top. Hmm. Just got busted. Oh, yeah, yeah. Multiple languages, scroll down, catalog. Pretty solid. There's Haskell implementation in Racket. In progress. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> the really cool stuff is also that you define your language syntax. Get an IDE for free. Oh? Huh? Racket has an IDE? It's like uh, Emacs mode for Racket, probably. There you go. <laughs> Racket 6.2 is a bit behind that. It shouldn't be that big of a deal, I think. Like, how much can you change on a closure? Or, or a list, I mean. It's, it's all parentheses, right? That's the language. What else would you want? How would I change it then? Seven, it said, right? Proudly presenting their seventh version. I remember seeing seven, yeah, here. 7.4. Hmm. This is the ability to show HD graphs and so place so you can easily get stuff like highlighting and etc. Throw lines and arrows. Hmm. Yeah, that would be good. Didn't Paul Graham write his third language as well in Racket or something? You're part of semi group? Why? <laughs> Shit. I probably was lazy or something. I want to combine them together easily. But uh, let's not do that. This is weird. This is this 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 is legal by the way. This is a legal instance of semi group. If you combine them, you can just drop the right one, and it it, it follows the laws. So if you ever want a semi group, and you don't really want to do anything, do that. Practice building a compiler and record makes it way slower than they yeah of course. But like, if you're still designing your language, it will be fine. You can even have this kind of compiler, which is also native, but still slow. But then again, I'm a developer, not a compiler builder, so I, I always complain about speed. Event back. Expression T1. Uh, you probably don't know about CTOR or something. Do you? No, you don't. Product fields. 
so. Is it? Got a generic song. There you go. Wants to have a constraint. I didn't even mention that it also has several debuggers. Step debugger. Without any work manual. Source code map. And highlights right expressions in your custom DS. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this, but. Expected kind K0 to constraint. TMG. Yeah, well, you're not A widget, man. You're F widget. Probably you shouldn't be N widget. Yeah, you shouldn't be on Twitch yet. Yo. Oh, okay. Show sure the correspondence of high level, of low level, and high level code since running. Even after you transformed it with craft transformations. More debugger, but more reliable, and without any work. <laughs> I haven't used debuggers uh, much in a long time. I think I used it with um, the last time was probably with like C sharp development and the Visual Code stuff. It could like display the entire state of whatever is going on. No, it was it was Visual Studio. <laughs> you could just like click stuff and see what's the value of whatever your your variables are and whatever. That was kind of nice, but then I. Was friendly for school and never touched C sharp again. Because, you know, it's horrible. Well, like, I don't think it composes very well with many other skills, like Linux development and whatever. So, I just decided not to. Mm. I started sorting uh, hacking around with this uh, GDB stuff, which is also interesting. But,. I know nothing about debuggers. <laughs> I don't even have a custom skin. <laughs> Let's not touch that anymore. I just do print debugging. It, it's amazing. And then I can leave the log messages everywhere and it's like helpful to colleagues as well. You know. And it always works. You can even do a kernel development with that. It doesn't always work. If you don't have SD out, it doesn't work. Hmm. Thanks, operating system. You absolutely need to look at the uptime values a lot. Text debugging is just very unuseful. In the general case. Really? Always works for me. Like then again, like if you do, uh, for example, the 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 thing that is in a large code base that was at Open Learning, uh, they they had Python code, so they didn't have a debugger either. I think, like nobody used it. I think, so <laughs> the printing was the only thing you could do. 
But then again, those endpoints were all pretty isolated from each other, so... Maybe you have worked with other stuff. Hmm. And Daisy was just Haskell, so... You know, like, you can do trace in Haskell, which is nice. But you don't really need debugger, I think. Yeah, I never... It's like the same thing with the uh, macros, right? If you never use that stuff, then you don't feel a need to get it. I've used debuggers, but... I don't know, I, I've never f had any problems with just getting getting it done with print line statements even though it sounds kind of dumb it always works and i don't like if i switch languages i don't need to figure out how the new debugger works because every language has their own little debugger right it's a fucking pain i suppose that's why a lot of people don't switch to anything new they're used to their like Professional setups. <laughs> yeah, switching is hard. But if you just use the print line debugging, you, you don't really care. <laughs> just go anywhere you want. Anyway, radical saying. Oh, you don't need it. Okay, well, just. Uh, just don't be so clever, man. Just an uh, uh, exception or something. No. Wrong color. Right color. Fit it in your head. Unrecognized pregnant. Options DSC. Why did they flip? I don't know, I don't think this project fits in my head anymore either. I constantly forget where stuff is and whatever. I recognize Prag. Ah. You should have the uh, W. How do you disable stuff? I know. Oh, it's because of the comma, of course. There you go. You're doing simple work. Uh, I suppose so. And even then, with like the. Yeah. I guess technically that's also simple. Like the neural network work, I mean. Uh. I couldn't really know what's going on. But it was more uh, a matter of testing. Writing lots of tests and figuring out what the fuck's going on. <laughs> yeah, like if you're dealing with lots of uh, stuff you haven't written and you don't really know what the fuck's going on, then yeah. I, I could see how you want to explore it like that. Hmm. Anyway, I have to go. <laughs> Short stream today. Well, maybe I'll go... I won't make any promises anymore. Because I always break them, but I probably will be back tonight. I want to finish this and do stuff, or but and do button stuff. Oh uh, yeah. So ending, ending. There we go. Alright, goodbye, guys. Yeah, see you around, Libby. Goodbye. <laughs>